Y'all know what? It's been a minute since we talked a bit about Real Housewives of Atlanta. And so I figured on this good little snowy day, this good snowy Sunday, at least over here on the East Coast where I'm at, I figured we'd get into a couple of things. And I was tagged in a couple of things yesterday. So I was like, mm, let's talk about Kande, okay? So you guys know that Real Housewives of Atlanta is currently on hiatus, right? And so the network appears to be taking its good old sweet time with the casting for the new season of the Royal Housewives of Atlanta, which is a little alarming to me because typically we would be in the thick of filming because it's the off season. It's been what, at least... I would say about four months or so since Atlanta went off, three or four, four months, I, I think, at this point. So this is a very long break, okay? Now, it seems as though Candy is spilling a little bit of tea. Now, it had been some tea coming out with Sheree talking about casting, but because nothing official had been made known, I was like, I don't really feel like talking about that. But, you know, Candy here is showing a little bit of impatience with regards to the casting process. Let's get into it. Now, this is previously live. I'm assuming it's probably one of her Amazon lives, which if you follow her, you know she does them quite frequently, along with other people like Kyle Richards from the Royal Housewives of Beverly Hills as well. Did Portia, I think Portia used to do them as well. I don't know if she still does them or not, but let's take a look at what she had to say real quick. Oh, just as any T or RHOA you can share with us. Other than they still haven't told everybody who they bring back. Yeah, they over here, they being real uh real tripping because they act like people don't have a life. People got, got lives around here. We gotta we'll make plans for other things. Uh, All right, so um I don't know if this other one was a pre I, I'm assuming this was a previous maybe Amazon live that she had done as well. Yes, and Randy says, Candy, please tell us you'll be a part of the new cast for RHOA. They are still working on the new cast, so I can't tell you anything. All right, so let's talk about it, because I see some people in the comments are like, well, that may be your answer, girl, if you ain't got no word. Here's my thing. You know, Candy has been a staple on the show for a very long time, and I'm assuming she's probably a staple in the salary department as well, meaning that good salary is probably up there, right? Now, one potential way to reduce costs for, new, for a new season and test out what put, could potentially work or to make space for more higher price tag ladies would be to potentially reduce the number of episodes. I mean, what if there were 12 episodes instead of 16? You understand what I'm saying? Like, because at least then we would be able to get a, I, I would almost prefer a shorter, more concise, more succinct, um, more meat and potatoes type of season versus something that's long and drawn out and it, the casting is not right or it doesn't work. And I think the other thing that's that's missing with uh, with Atlanta is, does the core four work in this instance? And who are the core four on this show? I mean, I think we could safely say it could be Kande, Kenya, Sheree, and Marlo. But for some reason, this core four just doesn't seem to hit all of the right notes. Okay? So what do they do? Hopefully, as they're casting new women, they are not casting any names. I want fresh faces. I want fresh stories. And if we could mix the old and the new, I feel like that would be the sweet spot. I don't know if you guys recall watching Real Housewives of New York. I think it was circa season six where they kept three of the ladies from the old guard, and then they brought in three new ladies in the form of Heather Thompson, Carol Radziwill, as well as Aviva Drescher. And I just think that that worked out so perfectly. It worked out perfectly well because then you had this very startling contrast of the newer ladies and the older ladies, the older ladies meaning the, the cast members who had already been there for a while. So it created quite an interesting dynamic and they expanded on it the following season and that's what i feel like needs to happen with real housewives of atlanta all right so moving on because i don't want to belabor that point and be the dead horse when 
you know, we have no idea what's going to happen or what they're going to do. Um, I could tell them easily who to cast, but nobody who's listening to me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Because because they ain't going to want to hear what I got to say. Anyway, let's move on. Basketball wives. All right. So we have here a 30 second trailer, but I felt like it was worth talking about because what we see here is a very interesting dynamic between Jackie and the rest of the ladies, specifically Jackie and Shawnee. And I want to point out a couple of interesting little tidbits for you as we lead up to this reunion that will be happening tomorrow night. So let's talk about it. All right. So you see here, they are at Vanessa Ryder's trailer, but we know that Vanessa will not be at this reunion. So it's interesting that they still had the place set up for her, right? And they're commenting on it in the trailer, just a little bit. This is wrong. No, oh, good for her. <laughs> so I'm not sure who they were saying was maybe in, Je in Vanessa's room, or I don't know what that was. I'm assuming at this point, they don't know that Vanessa's not there. She's sitting there eating a tater tot. All right, so what I also want you guys to notice is the theme for this reunion. Typically, Basketball Wives hasn't had a theme in the past that I could really understand, at least. And it seems as though they are picking up on the Housewives franchise uh, with a theme. Now, for me, I would say that I don't necessarily need a theme, okay, as much as I feel like I would just simply prefer a stylist do the styling, like one co cohesive stylistic theme, and it doesn't have to necessarily be one color, right? Because you can style a room in several colors, but they still work with the general aesthetic, right? But there is an outlier, and we're going to talk about that in a, in a minute, because I just, again, the, the dynamics are interesting here, right? So we see, again, all the ladies are going to be in black. The next thing. How many tater tots? <laughs> John Sally's back. <laughs> I'm befuddled. That's the Twitter thug couch over there. Brittany. Fake bitch, too. This gremlin. You f***ing peacock. I'm a whole f***ing fiance. All right, so I, I, I love Jennifer. I do. I really do. I does. Mm-hmm. However, comma.org, you being a fiance doesn't make you better than anyone else or it doesn't make you above any other situation. And so it's interesting to see that this is a dynamic that still exists. Um, I would like to know from the ladies and, and maybe the men is, who are watching the channel, is there a, I guess, a cultural significance to this idea of well, I'm married and she's not. Do women really lord that over other women in that way? I, I would be interested to, to see and hear what you guys have to say because I think the dynamic and the conversations amongst women may differ when the conversation is maybe behind closed doors or, you know, just in the culture of women in general. Like, is that a thing? And why is it still a thing? That's my question to you guys. I'm really interested in knowing that. Scammer. Nobody wants them. So Cleon is like, well, I mean, you're engaged to a scammer. I mean, uh, uh, let me, uh, I, I didn't say that. Cleona said it. So, you know, I mean, you know, it, it, it's Cleona. So, I mean, you know, she came to fight. Always picking Britney's side and Britney never picks mine. Her spirit is just what yeah. I love. So I'm, I'm assuming here that maybe Jackie is speaking about Malaysia. You're jealous of me. Jealous? Yeah. Be me. Is LA is LA is Jackie Christie. So uh, there has been this discussion about Jackie feeling like. Remember last year when Jackie posted a tweet or something like that, or a, a, I don't know what it was, a tweet. It was some type of post saying that they um, were trying to get her out of Basketball Wives. And she asked for people's opinions on it or something to that effect. Do y'all remember that from last year? Because I know I commented on somebody's post that posted it. 
and we subsequently did a video on it. And so my 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 wonder is, do you think that they're trying to get rid of her in any way, shape, or form? Because I mean, I do feel like Jackie Christie's been on this show the longest. So I don't know. Like I'm trying to understand it. Um, but what could Evelyn be jealous of? I mean, could it could be perhaps the fact that you know Jackie, and this does go back into a little bit of that sort of ladies who are married culture. Like, is there a thing amongst women that other women will lord it over them that they are single and they are not married or they are not in a relationship? I want to know, does this also fall into that category of jealousy? You thought these people were loyal to you and not me. So that is the one that is the most for me the most interesting piece of this puzzle that I'm trying to understand because does that mean that maybe Jackie was also speaking negatively about Shawnee as well? Or is that what we are being led to believe? Because if Shawnee, who might I add, again, another interesting dynamic because everybody else is dressed in black, Shawnee is dressed in red, okay? Um, so there's a very interesting dynamic there that is playing out. And I also wonder if that color differentiation is purposeful in its intent to convey, I am not on your level and you are not on mine. OK, and I will take this first chair and I will dress in the different color combination and I will make it bold and bright red. OK, to establish the fact that I and the one in charge. And I wonder if that's the case, letting the putting the girls on notice, particularly Jackie, OK, to say that I'm the one. OK, I'm the one. And you're going to have to deal with me. Remain where you're at. Remain no, no, where you're at. Up and get done up, man. Kill your ass. Um. So it appears as though reunion, the reunion has taken basketball wives back to what it has typically really been about, which is conflict, fighting, <laughs> run up, get done up, and Shawnee laying the smackdown. Okay, and that again has always been a fixture on this show, Shawnee laying the smackdown. So getting back to the preference, well, not really the preference, but the premise that, which was the reason why Britney was so disengaged with the show was that there seemed to be this hierarchy on this show. And when there is a dissenter in the hierarchy, then everybody in the majority tends to take the side of whomever is at the top of the hierarchy. And because Evelyn is the closest thing to Shawnee, she would still remain at the top of that hierarchy. However, Jackie has another ace in her sleeve because she too is at the top of the pecking order on the other side because she is the other married wife or the other married woman on the show. The dynamics, man, the dynamics on this show have never ceased to change. I think that's also what makes Basketball Wives Orlando so interesting because there is no hierarchy. It, it's, it, it doesn't seem like anybody's following that lead, okay? It's just who can make the most mess and we're going to all date each other's men. Or the men going to all date us. I don't know. I mean, interesting, right? So anyway, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section down below. And I will, of course, catch you in the next video.